Hello, welcome. Thanks for being here. We are honored to have you spend some time with us, whether you're watching this live, welcome if you are, and also uh, through the recording. Welcome to those of you watching the recording. Another episode of the Nonprofit Show, and today this bright yellow means it is a thought leader episode. These are very special. They're few and far between. We don't do them um, weekly. We certainly don't do them even monthly, but today we have Jessica Gruber with us. Jessica is our friend at Principal Creative Director at Buzzworks Creation. So welcome to you, Jessica. And she's here to talk to us about breaking the digital noise and fundraising. And right now, Q4 2022, Ooh. couldn't come at a better time, Jessica. So we're excited to have this conversation with you. Before we jump into the conversation, we want to remind our viewers and our listeners who we are. So hello to Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, CEO of The Raven Group. We are honored to be marching towards 650 episodes. Thank you to our very generous presenting sponsors. Those include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Be Generous, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, and Nonprofit Nerd. If you haven't checked out these companies, I encourage you to do so because they are here to help you with your mission, move it forward, just as all of our recorded episodes are. So if you have um, any interest in some of our recorded episodes, we hear often that someone will go to listen and watch one and they stay on for like six more episodes. So you can do that too. Uh, you can find us on Roku, YouTube, Vimeo, and Amazon Fire TV. And for those of you podcast listeners, go ahead and queue us up wherever you stream your podcast. So today we're going to start again with our with our guest, Jessica Gruber. Thrilled to have her here. Again, Jessica serves as the principal creative director at Buzzworks Creations. Welcome, Jessica. Hi, Jarrett. Hi, Julia. Thank you so much for having me on here. I'm excited to be here. I do have one question from the last time I was on here. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get the Scotch tape sponsor for your glasses? <laughs> We're still working on that, right? We, we haven't quite stuck that one. Oh, man. <laughs> da -da -da. That's very good. That's very good. Well, you know, the nonprofit nerd, her trademark are her glasses. And when we uh, do events, when we go out, when we send swag boxes to gifts to our um, sponsors and people that we meet along the way, those are prime swag. And people are always like, I need my glasses. <laughs> anyway, yeah. hey, Jessica, it's fabulous to have you with us. And as we were talking in the green room chatter, man, Q4 is just loaded up with so much noise. I mean, I would say some of it's good noise, <laughs> some of it not so much, but we're really excited to have you here to talk to us about that. But before we get into it, tell us a little bit about what Buzzworks does. Yes, um, Buzzworks is a digital agency specifically created for nonprofits. And we work with uh, organizations to build kind of a base of their story, their mission, and things to drive um, what they do. And, but it's there's also this different level where we take a look at what's going on in your digital space. space and who you're interacting with and how we can take those relationships and pull them offline to create this stronger relationship and this bond between you to create that true community in your nonprofit. Wow. That's fantastic. Uh, and I just have to say like anyone that works exclusively with nonprofits is fantastic because I feel like there's so many web designers, there's so many, you know, creative designers, content writers, but to know the market and to know, you know, the nuance of the nonprofit sector, that takes a little added uh, touch. So I'm excited to learn from you here, knowing that you work exclusively in the nonprofit space when it comes to their, their digital elements. And uh, again, today we're going to talk about breaking that noise. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Well, let's... one of the first things that you kind of point out, or I, I should maybe say frame this conversation, is you have the most interesting two phrases, stay aware and in touch. So what does that mean? What does that look like, I should say, 
within the nonprofit sector when it comes to digital communication? So stay aware has a double meeting. A lot of times as nonprofit leaders, we get put in positions where we're focused on our mission and we're focused on driving it. Um, and we forget to look up and we forget to look at our community and that person that is there to help you they're just an ask away. You're just so focused on your mission. So the first stay aware is looking up and realizing you have this community to support you. The second stay aware is making your, your community aware of what you're doing. Um, because if you're not sharing these stories, yeah, you're doing all this good stuff. But if you're not sharing it, it's staying bottled up inside of your nonprofit and no one knows what's going on. Um, so there's several ways to stay in touch with them. And one of the one things when we build websites and digital spaces, once we get that donor, the easiest way to figure out how they want you to stay in touch is a second small ask. And that question is, what way would you like us to communicate with you in the future? And there's several ways you can list. You can do text messaging. You say, oh, I just want to know your social media. Um, you can ask for their email. Um, and one option we like to give is none. I know you're doing a good job. Keep on doing it. There are those, those people and nonprofits that they don't want you to waste your precious time on informing you. They know you're doing a good job. But there are the people that want to be involved. They want to know your story and they want to come on your journey with you. You know, the, having that awareness and honoring it, <laughs> because I know I've been in so many databases that'll say, you know, uh, do not solicit, do not contact this person. They really only want their end of year uh, tax receipt because they're so committed to the mission. And that's really hard. But I, I again, want to recognize you know, we need to be aware, but we need to honor that as well. And so, you know, staying in touch with them in regards to that. <clears throat> now you're going to talk to us too. And I love this one, Julia. I think I like this one uh, the most is interrupting and engaging. And this is something uh, that you talk about. And again, today's episode is all about breaking the digital noise and fundraising. Again, we're here at Q4. So talk to us about, are we interrupting? or are we engaging? I love this question. Okay, so uh, you brought a creative on the show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we're gonna go out there. Clowns, oh. clowns in the circus, okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, not the creepy Steven, it's um, yeah, Steven clown. Yeah. The yeah. slapstick ones that you see in the Barnum yeah. Bailey Circus is, <laughs> They are the ultimate disruptors, but they are the ultimate engagers as well. I mean, you have the remaster taking the show around, mm -hmm. but the clowns are the ones that hold them together. And I learned way too much about clowns this weekend for this. <laughs> um, <laughs> so <laughs> wow, um, okay. you actually have them working as a team together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and their faces aren't painted just to be silly. Their faces are painted to exaggerate emotion. So people, thousands of people in the stadium can see it. Right. And the positions of the clowns, they all complement each other. So you have the leader and you have kind of the runt and then you have the one that's being silly. And all of these people come together to create this story that engages um, it disrupts, it keeps your eyes off of what's going on around in your world, and it brings you into their story to focus on them. And so today I want to share a technique. We get our impact stories from our clients, our nonprofits, um, and it's all it is, is uh, six questions. So you guys ready for this? Yeah. Okay. okay. So the first one is what's your story? A lot of nonprofits, they come in and they say, I can't ask them what your, your story are. But this question, it's so general. It's not asking them to go back to the past where it's negative. It's just saying, where are you coming from to make it more relatable? Mm -hmm. Your next question is, what was your hesitation in working with us? Oh. And so now 
you're creating, what object objections did they have to coming in and seeking help? And this doesn't even have to go for clients. You can use this on um, volunteers. You can use this on donors. What objections do you have coming in to being a volunteer? What objections did you have coming into being a donor? Mm -hmm. Your next one was after you started working with us, how did that hesitation change? Mm -hmm. And this is where they get to spotlight you and say, oh, they were the best ever. They solved my problems. I was able to give back to the community. It's really a family. This is what I love to do. Interesting. So we go one step further and it's what's one takeaway that has impacted your life. And I've seen stories where um, it wasn't even the volunteer that um, gave the story. We, we posted her story on social media and then her daughter came in and said, thank you for so much for making her part of your community. She was just widowed um, and she needed a place to come in and volunteer and create it. And she had just moved into Azel. And so we got that, what's their story by posting the first part. And it was just a beautiful story to see that they had truly built a family within this nonprofit. Wow. Yeah. To have that community. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the next one is how will this change your life in the future? Oh, yeah, That's I like that question. question. So now, yeah, I like that question. Yeah. So now yeah. you're not you're not just talking about the instant fix that they solved. You're talking about the future and how they helped you see their accomplish their vision, whether it was to give back to community, whether they needed your services and it excelled them in life, or um whether they were able to give your their planned giving to you so that th you could do their mission to go out and do good. So the last question is, it's kind of a bonus question, um, is if you're on the fence and working with this nonprofit, what words would some words? And this is where it comes in and it makes it authentic and it brings, ties that whole story together and it just provides that beautiful touch to the end. These are so great. Six, I mean, six amazing questions. One of the things we've talked about during the three years of the pandemic is that return on relationship. And I feel like these questions that you just shared with us, Jessica, really touch on that. So yeah, and we're definitely going into a time because everyone's tired of the Zoom and being online that they want that relationship, that they want to be part of the community. And so it's really a good time to go out and get that. You know, it's also, I think, um, <clears throat> I love that you said, and it's actually been a thread throughout this conversation this morning, is that engagement piece in listening to what the donor or the, the person that you're going to be engaging with. And I, I can see this volunteers, staff, funders, community partners, but asking them instead of telling them what you're going to do, but asking those questions, it's, it's really an important thing. And I've got to believe for a lot of folks, they don't see asking questions as engagement. But what I'm hearing you say is that it really is that process of engagement. It's a new yeah. way to think about it. Yes, it is a process of engagement. And once you get these stories, you're able to start creating these profiles of these are the people we need to attract. And you're able to pull these words of this is what people are responding to. And so I'm going to take these words and start putting it back out into the community. Yeah, very, I, I, very, very interesting. You know, Jarrett, we talk about this so much about how we don't ask our community enough. We just assume. We do. We assume a lot. And, you know, even our, our guest previous <clears throat> talked about really that data, the research right. of the constituency base. And so it's really important. And I do think that that's something that all of us in the sector could do a much better job of. Now, I'm curious, uh, Jessica, because you're going to take us into the power and the use of influencers. And I feel like that word influence or influencer has really grown also. That's accelerated over the last couple of years. But what does using the power of influencers mean when it comes to breaking that noise of digital fundraising? Well, 
really influencers it's just a different word people have coined to -to peer-to-peer fundraising Mm -hmm. in the digital space so what you're looking for are influencers especially if you're starting out this can be a really powerful way to jump start your um, social media influence or your donor influence or whatever you're wanting to influence. You find that one person within your community and they don't have to have a lot of connections. They just have to have powerful connections to move you. Um, And you ask them and you go say, hey, can you help me out with this bit? Um, Good resources for finding your influencers um, would be a local news outlet. We just did this, Um, our local food pantry, they have a shortage on food. And so we connected with um, the Azel News and they came out to the chamber. So this is kind of going off of the digital space, but then we brought it back in. The Azel News challenged at the chamber to challenge five businesses to fill the shelf, fill the pantry. And so then those five businesses had to go out and challenge other business, another business. And so now we have this cascading effect of giving back. That is so important. I love that you bring it back to the peer to peer, that connection, that power of relationship, the power of partnership. Um, I've seen that trend over the last couple of years, I would say it's really, you know, advocating for the, the supporters of the mission to help, you know, spread the word and be advocates for the mission and other, you know, parts of communities, because we're all looking to build our donor database and how do we attract and attain new donors. So that peer-to-peer influencers, that's, that's an important one. Yeah. And I would, I would say the most important part of the peer-to-peer is they brought you in or they brought their connections into you. Right. So now you need to nurture those. The, they're, right. they're still kind of cold. They're a warm, cold introduction into your nonprofit. And so you need to jump on it mm-hmm. and nurture those people into a more warm relationship. Mm-hmm. The other thing you can do with um, this is, okay, this person opened their network to me. Yeah. How can I open my network back to them to support them in what they are doing. Mm -hmm. And that helps them be, oh, they want to support me now. Okay. Now we've just made this alignment and now they want to support you more in the future. You know, I I like that you said that because I feel like that creates champions for our missions and our causes. Mm -hmm. And, and so that it is a continual thing um, because I don't think we recognize that enough. You know, these are, These are the people that go out into our communities and have other relationships or opportunities um, that can really, really help us. And yet you're right in that we don't nurture them. I I appreciate that you use that word as well, because I feel like we don't nurture our champions enough as, as part and parcel to this. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be through thank you letters and all these notifications. There's other ways to nurture these people. Um, what are their goals and what are their values and how can you tap into those to, to grow them? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, that's fantastic. And especially at the digital age, you know, like sharing a message or, or making it so easy to invite someone else to an event or to, you know, uh, share the mission of the organization, because we all know that, you know, the internet is right at our fingertips for so many of us and to use their voice in addition to the nonprofit's voice is pretty, pretty powerful. And you're right, Julia, I love that Jessica used nurture because we do need to nurture those relationships. Yeah. And we don't do it enough. I appreciate you bringing this um, to the forefront. I also like what you had to say and that sometimes we're like so deep in, into what it is we're doing and our heads are down, we're not looking up and looking out. Um, I would imagine that that kind of feeds into the whole nurturing aspect and why we're not doing it. Yeah, and it's it's interesting because when, when you're a smaller nonprofit, 
your goal is to be the bigger nonprofit. <laughs> but when you, if you look at a bigger nonprofit, they have that development team. Yes. They have people to do it. They have people specifically out there yeah. nurturing people for you. That's how important it is. Mm -hmm. I love that you brought that up because that's absolutely true. Yeah. Well, let's um, kind of switch it up a little bit. And we're talking about, you know, the noise and, and, and all these things that we need to be doing. Talk about visual storytelling. You know, we, we get so caught up in the narrative what does this mean so there's different levels of visual storytelling um everyone has this expectation that we have to be instagram perfect and <laughs> our photos have to be pretty and yeah no, no you don't have time to go do that i mean yes if you're doing a fundraising event and you're spending, yes, get the photographer to take the amazing photos so people want to share it. Mm -hmm. But if we're sharing behind the scenes, it doesn't have to be glamorous. Some of the best posts come from just small video clips yeah. of what they're doing behind the scenes. Um, one of our nonprofits, they're going, um, they're needing to do updates. And so we took just small photos of them having to push their um, their services out the door. Oh. And this ramp was like, it didn't have a rail. And so we made it just a funny video of, okay, now he has to be the superhero. Yeah. And he has to make it out the store. And it, moms, if you have a child and you push a stroller through a door, you know how hard that is. Yeah. Um, and then there's this ledge. And so we made this funny and then we had a second volunteer. I was like, okay, now it's her time. Um, and so it was just a fun video to get people involved in seeing what people, the volunteers really had to do to accomplish their mission. Um, wow. I think the other thing that I would say is to use infographics. Mm. Um, I love infographics. But it can't be like the ones that are just stats from research and white papers. They have to be relatable to your audience. So we did one, I keep on going back to this food pantry. Um, we did one where we took the six months of the amount of people they have served in the past six months, and we compared it to the milk prices, the rise of milk prices prices. Wow. And you definitely saw the increase of people they needed to serve. And now for food pantries, it's really hard because their prices are increasing mm -hmm. and they still have to buy more food. Right. And so it, and we put that up there and we started getting donations off of that one graphic. So that's pretty powerful. I love the Art. creativity of that truly. And uh, I also love an infographics where like, let's say for the, for the pantry, instead of a regular thermometer, you know, let's stack milk cartons instead of that regular thermometer. And I think that's a great visual element for storytelling. That's not your typical, you know, mercury kind of looking <laughs> thermometer. It ties it back to the mission. And again, it goes back to that storytelling. Yeah. I love that. You know, um, Jessica, I've got to ask this question because we're, we're so panicked about trying to get all this work in. It is Q4. There's a lot of uncertainty. Um, will we still get the year end donations with, you know, the economy in flux and concerns there? What are you seeing? I mean, are you seeing that you're having to change the narrative because of where we are right now? Or are you just like, stay the course, use these tools, but stay the course. Like kind of, where are you in that ecosystem of change? Um, right now, I would say stay the course. I mean, it, it just consistently show up. Okay. Um, don't get scared of it because as soon as you start getting scared of it, that's when you start hiding again. Mm-hmm. And so you need to be aware, stay aware of the community 
know that we're going through this time. Mm -hmm. And when you ask, be aware that we're doing, this is what's happening. How we, can we make it happen? Mm -hmm. I love that you took it back to the, to the top, which was stay aware and in touch, right? Like really be in touch. And one of the things that we know happened early in the pandemic was so many nonprofits were like, we're just going to hit the pause button. We're going to sit on the sidelines. Right. And I feel that if we continue to be fearful of what's going to happen, um, then many people will probably retreat as you were, you know, saying Jessica. So staying the course, I love that that's your final answer <laughs> uh, and moving forward, you know, to, and stay aware and stay in touch with your constituency base. Yep. It's really important. You know, we've got a, a, a viewer that um, just messaged in, and this is gonna put you a little bit on the hot seat, but okay. um, a viewer right, has written in, is Canva a good tool to learn how to create an infographic if you're not a graphic designer? So I think you're, I think that, that uh, your infographic has really resonated with our viewers and listeners. But talk about that if you could briefly. Yes, I use Canva. My team uses Canva. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a nonprofit, they have a program where you can get Canva for free. So go sign up. I love that. Well, thank you. I appreciate you uh, giving us that insider tip because that's that's amazing. That's really, really important. It's well, a great tool. And you're right, Jessica. It has some templates in there. So for those of us, that aren't designers, it can at least get you started. <laughs> I mean, I, I come from a design background. I still go in there because it's just so easy. I mean, I have my programs that I do my fancy stuff. Sure. But yeah, if I need something quick or I'm doing something more social media based, I'm in Canva. You're doing Canva. Wow. Yeah, great. That's, that's incredible. Well, good. Uh, that's an, that's a, uh, an amazing endorsement and and we really really appreciate this well hey everybody um i want to make sure that we um spend some time connecting um you our viewers and our listeners to jessica jessica you've got um a new series that you're going to be launching in november can you share with us what that's going to be yes we are it's um if you go to your nonprofit growth dot com um, it's going to be a three-part series on building your community. And we're really going to focus on relationship maps mm -hmm. and your recruiting message and how to network to bring in this community to build you up. Awesome. Fantastic. How long is the workshop or the series? Um, we are doing them once a week. So it starts November 3rd at 1130 Central. Okay. Um, and we're doing them once a week on Thursdays up until Thanksgiving. Awesome. Sounds great. Perfect yeah. timing. Well, that's great. And tell us again, the landing page on that. The landing page is your nonprofit growth.com. Love it. Your nonprofit nonprofit growth.com. Fabulous idea. And this is, um, I, I love what you're kind of where you're directing us to, because I think a lot of times in the nonprofit sector and Jarrett and I have talked a lot about this, you work so hard to this like Q4 and then you don't do the stewardship that you need to build those relationships at the beginning yes. of the year. And we're going to talk in that series, our last session is talking about how to systemize it to make it easier on you. I love that. Efficiency is definitely one thing that we need here in the sector. Yes. Jessica Gruber, thank you for joining us as a thought leader for today's nonprofit show. Again, for those of you watching or listening, Jessica is the Principal Creative Director at Buzzwork, Buzzworks Creations. And the web address for that is buzzbuzzwks.com. So check her out and her team, again, exclusively providing amazing services for the nonprofit community, the nonprofit sector. Thanks for doing what you do, Jessica. We're so grateful to have you here. Thank you. And if you guys like this show, go share it with another nonprofit. Yes. It's, it helps it. It grows it. It grows you and it grows everyone. So go share this show. I love it. Thank you. Well, I'm Julia Patrick. I've been joined by Jarrett Ransom, the nonprofit nerd herself. 
We could not agree more. Share our content. <laughs> share it. Share Leave it. Leave a review it. too. Yeah. yeah. We love that. Well, thank you. That's really cool. That, that made my day. That really did. Hey, another thing that makes my day is all of our sponsors are with us day in and day out so we can have these conversations like we have today with Jessica. So we want to give our gratitude to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, Be Generous, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, and the Nonprofit Nerd. Without these folks, we wouldn't have these conversations. Hey, Jessica, you're a real treasure. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's Thank been you. great. As we like to end every episode, we want to remind ourselves, our viewers, our listeners, and even our sponsors, stay well so you can do well. Thank you, ladies. We'll see you again.